Hello and welcome back to a very exciting tutorial on why an airplane flies, specifically covering Bernoulli's principle. A principle developed by Daniel Bernoulli, who was born into such a competitive family that when he tied his father in a scientific contest, his dad kicked him out of the house. But let's not rehash daddy issues from the 1700s. The real question is how does his principle factor into flight of an airplane? Let's take a look. Okay, so Bernoulli's principle is built upon the law of conservation of energy, which basically states that energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can change form. Imagine a roller coaster. At the top of the hill, the roller coaster has lots of energy associated with its position. It's really high up, which is described as potential energy. Now, when the roller coaster gets to the bottom of the hill, a lot of that potential energy is gone, but it's not destroyed. It just changed its form into energy associated with motion. It's going fast, which is described as kinetic energy. So potential energy at the top of the hill converts to kinetic at the bottom. The biggest takeaway is energy isn't created or destroyed. It just changes forms. So if something gains, something's gotta give or vice versa. So building upon this, Bernoulli's principle explains the behavior of pressures in gases. In an airstream, there are two forms of energy. Potential energy, which is the airstream's static pressure, and kinetic energy, which is the airstream's dynamic pressure. So Bernoulli's principle states that total pressure remains constant. Total pressure is made up of static and dynamic pressure. Represented mathematically, total pressure equals static pressure plus dynamic pressure. To help visualize this principle in action, let's look at a pipe with air flowing through it. So here's our pipe. We have air going in and and air going out. Awesome. Now, due to steady state of flow, at each cross section in the pipe, we have the same amount of air passing through it at any moment in time. Here we have the same amount of air passing through, same as here, and same as here. You get the point. Now let's squeeze the middle of the pipe. Well, guess what? Still at every cross section in the pipe, we have the same amount of air passing through it at any moment in time. Same amount of air passing through here, as here, and same amount even here. So for there to be the same amount of air passing through here in a moment in time, the air must be and is traveling faster, which means more energy associated with motion, which is dynamic pressure. So yeah, more dynamic pressure at this point in the pipe. Now going back to Bernoulli's principle, the total pressure of the system remains constant. It hasn't changed, but dynamic pressure went up, so something's gotta give. So static pressure goes down and an area of low pressure actually develops. So right where the pipe gets narrow, we have an area of relative low pressure. Well, that's all great, but what's the point? Well, let's think of an airplane now, specifically its wings. Let's take one of its wings and cut it so we can see its cross section shape. Does it look familiar? Yes, it does. It's the same general shape as the squeezed pipe, or at least half a squeezed pipe. But regardless, we get the same results on the wing as in the pipe for the same reasons. So just like the pipe, the air travels faster over the hump, dynamic pressure goes up, something's gotta give, so static pressure goes down, and we have a relative low pressure that has developed on top of the wing. So if we have a relative low pressure on top of the wing, that means there's a relative high pressure on the bottom of the wing. The air wants to go from high pressure to low pressure, creating an upward force known as lift on the wing. Which yes, lift is what holds the airplane in the air. Now that's some pretty awesome science, and that's why an airplane flies according to Bernoulli's principle. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and be sure not to miss our next video by subscribing to us on YouTube and liking our Facebook page. And of course, until next time, onwards and upwards, thanks for watching.